Very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> My name is Promise Mkwananzi. I'll be the spokesperson of the Triple C as we go forward. We've called this press conference just to give you an update on the situation unfolding in the country and our attitude towards the process thus far. Uh, we wish to start by thanking the citizens of Zimbabwe. We have shown unrelenting resilience and determination to exercise their inalienable democratic right to vote. We think that this is paramount, this is important, because the right to vote did not come for free. There was a protracted struggle to bring about the realization of the right to vote. And we cannot surrender that right today. So we continue to urge our citizens to remain vigilant in exercising that right and safeguarding and protecting their expression through the ballot. The next coming days are going to be crucial in determining the future of this country. President Nelson Chamisa is well and fine, ready and geared to form a government for everyone. To form a government, an all-inclusive government, which will benefit all citizens in the country. As a movement, we are currently seized with monitoring the electoral process particularly the V11s and V23s. We are watching ZEC, and we hope that ZEC is going to do the right thing. We know that there are areas where they are refusing to post the V11s and the V23s. And in some instances, it is alleged that presiding officers are actually instructed to make clandestine phone calls before publishing the V11s. We ask our observers, local and international, and our part of our political party observers, <coughs> to record the results and ensure that the results that were, were counted at the polling station are the same results that we posted. We are still concerned with the process. We feel that the electoral process is fundamentally flawed and is unable to produce a free and fair electoral outcome. Nonetheless, we knew this beforehand, and we have prepared ourselves to win an unfree and unfair election. How do we do this? We have done that by registering our people overwhelmingly and ensuring that as much as possible and using all means permissible in a democratic society, we defend and protect our vote. So far, the information we have is that we are leading on the presidential election comfortably and we are doing well on the parliamentary elections. We expect this trend to continue because the people of Zimbabwe have decided that they want change. And the expression of that desire for change is going to come through the victory of the Citizens Coalition for Change and President Nelson Chavinsa. As I said earlier on, we are still concerned about the process, and I'm going to highlight some of the key irregularities, which in our view are sufficient to nullify and invalidate this election by a competent court of law. They get an obligation to give us the correct voters' role 
upon the successful nomination of our candidates, it was not to be. The ballot papers, we still did not know who printed them, where they were printed, and how many were printed. Zeke had announced that they printed 7.1 million ballot papers for the presidential election and 6.6 .6 million for the parliamentary and local government election. Now, the question that begs answers is how did we have the level of shortage that we witnessed and the delays in the delivery of ballot papers, in particular in areas that are perceived to be the strongholds of the Citizens' Coalition for Change. This is a clear indication of the unwillingness of ZANPF, of ZANPF and ZEC to be transparent and to provide a level playing field for all political actors in Zimbabwe. Still on the ballots, there were pathetic photos of our candidates, in particular our presidential candidate, Advocate Nelson Chamisa. We believe that it was deliberate to put a picture which was not clear in the desperate attempt to cloud the will, the will of the people. <clears throat> we do not accept this. And we hope that we'll have an improvement in the future. In 2018, <coughs> the AU Observer Mission made a recommendation that ZEC must be more transparent and more consultative in the coming elections. I'm afraid to say that they have not passed that test. And subsequently, they have compromised their credibility as an impartial, professional, and credible body to conduct free and fair elections. Free and fair elections are the backbone of legitimacy. If Mr. Mnangagwa <coughs> wants to claim any veil of legitimacy, he must allow Zimbabwe to have a free and fair election, which in turn will allow our people to freely express their will. In conclusion, uh, we heard that Zeke was saying they delayed the printing of ballot papers because of court cases that were brought about not just by the Triple C but by other parties. We want to put on record that we should not have gone to court in the first place if Zeki had been doing things properly. The fact that people were going to court <coughs> over commonsensical processes is in itself a great cause for concern. We would not have gone to court if Zeke had done things properly. But the paradox is that if we had not gone to court, it would have been worse. So Zeke must stop making flimsy excuses. They had five years to prepare for this election. We gave them a benefit of doubt. Unfortunately, they failed the test. Uh, we are also seeing a concern on, on, on some of the figures we are receiving on the ground. For example, some of the delimitation anomalies are the fact that we are supposed to have at least between 22,000 and 33,000 per constituents. I'm told that in Bari, more than 43,000 voted. It means, therefore, that between February and, uh, the, and the closure of the registration process, 
a curious 12,000 additional voters <laughs> registered. It's a red flag. It's also prevalent in Juru and in other areas. I think I've come to the end of our update. I will invite members of the press to ask questions. My sister Ellen will assist me with the, with the questions, picking and I'll be answering the questions. Thank you. Um, uh, before I take we take questions, I think uh, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we take questions, I think it's important that uh, we talk about the arrest of our colleagues in the civil uh, sector, the arrest of our members of our uh, SME. And uh, okay. Uh, as as people say, we want to reiterate. Uh, the fact that uh, we are a free country and our constitution <coughs> and our laws in general, you know, allow for a free space uh, and also allow for accountability. And the, what our colleagues in the civic sector, uh, it, it specifically ZESNI and uh, ERC, we're trying to ensure that uh, we have a transparent election and also enhance the accountability of this election. This is the mandate. This is their mandate as the, as the, as the, you know, as the election watchdogs. And therefore, as the Triple C, uh, in addition to what my colleagues say, we want to strongly condemn their arrests. And we want to ensure that uh, they'll be released soon and they'll be given the opportunity to continue in executing uh, their mandate. So that's what I wanted to, uh, to add on to. So maybe we can take one or two questions, which uh, we will respond to. If you could just uh, introduce yourself and indicate uh, the media house that you belong to. My name is Steve Bento, I think it's been the Eastern Republic. So you are saying uh, the information that you are reading <coughs> in terms of the report of the parameter of the sugar that you have What makes you say that statement? Oh, thank you. Okay, another one. My name is Duncan Kamba from NTV Kenya. I would want to know uh, the issue that he has uh, talked about uh, and clear picture of your candidate in the ballot paper. Was it there time that uh, parties were supposed to verify the images and the sample of the ballot papers? Was that one not done? <laughs> Uh, the third one, yes. Uh, my name is Kanachi from Public Service Media. Um, I wanted to ask uh, the uh, rumors that uh, um, I believe my area has been dismissed from the post of the sports. Uh, is it true? I don't have that. Thank you for the questions. We are unable to give you the figures. Uh, because of the limitations of the law, we we'll wait for the official announcement uh, by the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission that we are also collating and tabulating the election. <coughs> so we know what we're talking about. Um, Advocate Maheri has not been dismissed, still an integral part of the movement. She has been redeployed elsewhere, and uh, the president will state those things. Um, currently, as you all know, Advocate Mahere is seized with campaigning in one of the problematic constituencies here in Harare. Uh, I'm told actually that uh, Hindi, Hindi polling station. In your constituency, the, the way problems around the, the, the display of, of the of the V levels. So you can imagine the task at hand. I think uh, I would have answered I've answered those two. I would defer the third question. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, oh, okay, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, in response to the question uh, regarding the issue of the ballot paper, you go to section 52A of our electoral act. It's very clear uh, with respect to the duty of a ZEC uh, to inform uh, stakeholders and also there is the overriding duty to be transparent and to be accountable. When talking about transparency, we would have, we expected Zach to give our stakeholders the opportunity to, to, in fact, not stakeholders, but the nominated candidates, the opportunity to inspect uh, the ballot paper. This has been the trend in the, in the previous elections. You go back to even the by-elections in March uh, uh, 22, 2022. Our, our candidates have the opportunity to inspect the vote, uh, to inspect uh, the ballot paper. And just like in, in 2018, if you could recall the ballot, the sample ballot paper that was in circulation, that was part of the inspection. But because uh, ZEC abrogated uh, its duty of being, uh, in its responsibility of being uh, 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 transparent, this is why we are in a mess yesterday. You'd go, for example, in a uh, in wards, uh, in Bulawa, for example, ward one and ward, uh, 20, uh, ward 22, we had cases where there was a mixer, you know, in those areas where some of our candidates, triple C candidates, were not on the ballot uh, paper. And also, you go to uh, one ward in Jimba, you would realize that, uh, you know, there's uh, the name of the triple C candidate, but the, fa the face is a Zanu PF person. So those are issues that could have been resolved uh, when uh, they could have opened up to stakeholders to, uh, to, to inspect uh, uh, the ballot. So in short, we never consulted and there was no uh, opportunity to inspect. And moreover, the issue of the design of uh, the ballot paper for the president. <coughs> we noted that they published the law. It's clear in the law that uh, the, the ballot paper should be in a single color and should be in alphabetical order. But because we're not consulted in the design and Zach chose not to follow the law, you realize that the ballot paper had two columns. And the, the two columns were meant <coughs> to, to profile Mr. Mangava so that he becomes number one in the ballot paper, which clearly, you know, we see some connivance. Uh, between Zach and, and uh, the incumbent. So these are the concerns uh, that we've raised with regards to the ballot paper. Thank you. Any further questions? I'd love them to reserve from two speakers. Um, <clears throat> there are about uh, 10 uh, CSO members who were arrested, I think, yesterday. Uh, and uh, the government is alleging that they are working with you, the CCC. Um, how exactly are you, or were you working with them? Any other person? Yeah, one here. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Hey, John, from the, John McDermott from the Economist. If the DPT results that you could are different in a negative way from the official SEC results, what in addition to a court challenge would the CCC strategy be? For instance, would you call for a peaceful protest by the supporters? Uh, well, I, I cannot speak on behalf of the organizations, but to the best of my understanding, civil society organizations are independent <coughs> and impartial organizations. They work with everyone. They work with every stakeholder. It could be ZAN, it could be CCC, whoever they want to work with. So I think the, the, the statement by the government is, is inaccurate and really just, you know, trying to justify and unjustify the arrest. Uh, they should not even be talking about that because those people are not supposed to be arrested in the first place. And the, you know, the problem is that the arrests, they actually stain the credibility of the age. And we wonder how, 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 what the logic is there. Then in terms of the, 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 the election results, I think what we can say for now is that uh, we are monitoring the situation. Uh, we've learned a lot from the past, and uh, we will be 
respondingly, accordingly, at the appropriate time. But what we want to assure the people of Zimbabwe is that we are not going to let the PF get away with theft again. I think if there are no other questions. Yes, one, uh, one more. I'm just I'm receiving from the <coughs> statement. Are you aware on the arrest of uh, election observers in a region called uh, Grange? Uh, if yes, how many have been uh, arrested? Uh, if you are aware of any election observers who have been arrested? No, we're not aware. Is there any? Uh, my question. I think we'll take the last three questions. My name is Yang I'm a freelance journalist. Um, so my question is emanating from um, Tasa Center, where I was covering yesterday. Which is that? Tasa Center. <coughs> uh, we spoke to the contesting candidate for CC, and he highlighted that there was a, a lot of material. You know, uh, he said uh, the contesting candidate for some day passed the people. Uh, I think he said uh, about 10 buses, which came from places like Uzaban, all the various uh, colleges in, in, in Zimbabwe. Uh, I wanted to hear your position. Uh, what are you going to, to do? What's the plan? Because if you say we have an unlimited plan in place. Well, I'm not privy to the facts of, of, of that case. But as I said, we have separate different departments that are monitoring everything who respond to it when it is brought to our attention. Last one. Yes. I presume that the GPC has been engaging the police uh, to say the electoral anomalies and irregularities. So I want to know, in your engagements, are the police aware of each other with group called FAS and activities and what is their communication opposition concerning FAS? <coughs> yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, I'm thank you. Yes, uh, the only engagement that we had uh, with the police uh, with respect uh, to funds was when uh, they uh, violated uh, citizens and actually beat our people. Like, for example, we did a, ca a case in, uh, in uh, uh, Mavoko during the voters for inspection. The, the thing is, we all know who funds is. And even when we report to the police, even when we <coughs> talk to them, to say, these people, they are violating voters. No action has been taken. So clearly, as much as we can report out there, but nothing has been done. So this is why we are saying, as the citizens, we continue encouraging everyone out there not to be intimidated by, by fans, because we clearly know that it's working with ZANU-PF. And we are aware of the shenanigans that happened uh, uh, during our voting, where they intimidated voters. We are aware, this is why we have concerns in some areas, like for example, in Mutasa, South, that, uh, Mutasa Central that he's talking about. We received cases of uh, intimidation uh, by fans. But then that didn't stop the citizens. Some were resilient, some thought no, you know what, this is a uh, time, the opportunity to bring about change. So they can do anything, but they will not change the hearts of citizens. But anyway, the bottom line is that as a party, we are monitoring their activities. We will ensure by all means, uh, democratic and peaceful means, that our people are protected out there. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of this press conference. Please do note that to be updating you at regular intervals. And feel free to phone us for any comments or any information that you need. Thank you very much.